right at the base of the mountain too. But Devil's Fork is up the up the fork uh, has a population, one of the only populations of uh, native brook trout left in South Carolina. So kind of interesting for that. So we're we're in the Devil's Fork Farm is where we are. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And this is one of the quietest places on the entire world. Power boats don't come back in here much. The paddler great there in the Oh wow, there's a black sided green warbler right there. Right. The cool cool bird that are flipping around. Got, uh, right there. Yeah, you see his bright yellow head. Yeah. There he is in black and white. Striped board is in the maple right there. Black sided green. That's that's one of my favorite warblers. It's one I associate with the mountains more than any other place. Yeah, he's a, in that little red maple. I'll show you what he looked like. <laughs> um, it's one of the birds that I, um, when I'm teaching bird songs, it's one of the easiest bird songs to, to learn because the black, the black footed green warbler goes, uh, and you guys have all heard this in the woods in the spring. It's See, he'll be migrating out of here. Yeah. He is going to Colombia right yeah. now, mm -hmm. South America right now. I know in the spring of the year, it's one of the birds you first listen to back in here. Yeah. Louisiana water. Truck. Yep. But let me show you what he looks like. And uh, black throated green. There yeah. you go. That's him. Yellow hat. Right in there. The song is kind of interesting because we think about. Bird song being the same everywhere it's not. That's the, the actual call. Oh, yeah. yeah, you've heard that. But now, this call, <laughs> hold on. <coughs> hey, here they don't sound like that. There's four syllables before the. Right. In and that, you did was in two. that, and what I did was Z, 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 and Z. There's three syllables before the Z in our southern Appalachian birds. And then you go up north, <laughs> New England, which is where they record all the bird calls because all the rich birders are from Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, they, they usually push the, the northern accent on our birds, so it's harder to get the southern birds to respond to them and kind of call them up because just like people, you have. Northern accent, southern accent. The northerners, of course, they're going to talk faster and oh, put yeah. one more syllable into their <laughs> that is so into wild. every word they say. <laughs> they just say, "You ain't from around here." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Black that green northern bird. They do not. So the reason uh, they come all the way here from South America is because I mean, we, uh, we in the spring when our leaves leaf leaves out. Uh, you know, every spring, how all the little web worms fall down out of the end. Yeah. They love it. The yeah. geometrids fall down out of the trees. And they've transitioned um, very the well. Young the young growth, the production of oh, that flush of young growth, trees don't have any secondary chemicals to prevent yeah. things from eating them early in the spring mm -hmm. when that young growth is coming out. And so they're perfect food. So we have this incredible abundance of moth larvae that just bloom out in the springtime. And there's so much food available in the spring in our trees. That the native birds, the chicken eaters, one kind of junk the birds that stay here all year, they can't possibly eat it all. And so the whole reason that we have neotropical migrants is so that they can come up here to get away from all the competition down in the rainforest, where there's lots of food, but every inch is, is filled with space. Up here to where there's an overabundance of food, and that's why they come here. And that's why birds migrate no matter where they go. Right? Red knots migrate all the way from the tip of the Arctic all the way down to, to the tip of uh, South America every year. It's a shorebird, and the reason they go to the Arctic is because that flush of growth in the Arctic, which only lasts for four or five weeks, there's not enough birds around to eat all the insects that are produced in that flush of grass, right? So that's why they make that huge journey from pole to pole, is just to take advantage of a, of a really um, very narrow window of resource availability that gives their young it's interesting in the southern hemisphere, like in Chile, I worked in Chile with it for four years, and um, in Chile, we only have one neotropical migrant bird. There's only one species of southern Elena that flies from Brazil down to Chile 
every year to breed and then back up to Brazil. Even though there's extensive hardwood forests there in coastal Chile, um, they don't do that. So it's really a North American phenomenon. When you think about it, the reason that would have developed is because there's so much land mass in North America in the temperate zone, and in South America there's this little tiny tip on the right. So um, there's it goes it's small and we get to we're a funnel from the north and South America a funnel towards the south. Right? It's also why we make them so crazy when North and, and people in America don't care about climate change or adapting to it or whatever, or not dealing with it at all because North America is the most volatile of all the climate, all the continents on planet Earth. When stuff goes extinct, it goes extinct here first. Because we are a funnel from the north, so as the, as we get cold air, the cold air comes right down through the center of the continent, what we call continental climate. And the funnel is cold. That's why we get the cold vortex. The vertical lippers is to come down through here. And anybody who's ever lived, like I have in South Dakota, turned to South Dakota, saw 146 degrees. Can you imagine that? No. <laughs> so that can happen. I mean, it's crazy. Um, and 60, 80 degree switches in temperature aren't in 24 hours are really commonplace. As a matter of fact, uh, there was a 60 degree switch in temperature in 20 minutes one time in um, South Dakota. So we, anybody who's lived in the center of the continent knows it's continental climate because there's no water buffering so close to the center in North America. 